I've always been interested in interior design from um, childhood, really. I was brought up in the Far East in, in Hong Kong, and I think it's I was exposed quite early to not only lots of culture, but quite lots, lots of luxury. All the hotels were there way before anywhere else that were accessible um, to see things and to appreciate the beauty of what was around. When it comes to planning a project, there's, there's, it's Firstly, it's important what the project is and, and who the team is and to understand from the client exactly what their um, goal is and what they would like. We then typically look at the, obviously look at the project and start to think about the team, whether they're in place or we need to advise on the team. Um, and I call it the bones part and then we start to build it up um, from there. But it's all about the relationship with the client and understanding what they want to achieve. I suppose we do have a signature style. I like to think we don't have one. But when I look back over projects over the last, you know, lots of years, I would say that we, what we do is quite timeless. Um, it's supposed to be stylish and elegant. I think those are the things that come through. There are other words, but if I was to use three, those are, those are the three. And we always consider lighting in the design because um, if when we work on tend to work on quite luxurious projects and I always think there's not much point in spending all that money on beautiful things if you can't see them properly and where where lighting comes in and where lighting experts come in is they'll you know understand about shadow and things like that that we could miss when we're looking at all the other aspects so for us it's it's a key factor Um, the right lighting scheme will bring it alive um, and certainly creates a different ambience at different times of day um, for different functions within within the space um, and that's that's why it's it's a great it's a great thing to have someone in to do it in this day and age there's an expectation for some sort of lighting control the challenge is um, a usable lighting control one of our recent projects in central London for a couple um, in their 60s, um, we, we gutted an apartment in a really lovely central location and they were really w wanting to have everything new and modern and do project properly. However, the challenges with, with learning how to do that were, were tough. We got there and we, put, um, we used Control 4 and we got there in the end, but it's difficult. It's difficult to get that blend and uh, some clients will automatically say we just don't want any of that fancy stuff but an element of it is required. My favourite design trends of the moment are um, the fact that designers tend to be mixing things up quite a lot so it's, it's great to be able to source from different things, source new and old or mix new and old, source from different suppliers um, and it's quite good fun. Um, that juxtaposition of getting the balance right. It's quite challenging, but it's fun. When it comes to decorative lighting, we would typically look at the ones we know quite well, but we're always looking for new ideas. So CTO lighting is a good one. Um, sometimes Bella Figura, Best and Lloyd. And I would, um, we're just investigating at the moment the ones that we saw at Maison in Paris in January because they're a good handful of interesting European lights to explore. Uh, yes, we've got a lovely project in the Caribbean, which is a new build, which we're very excited about. So I um, have no idea what we're going to specify at this point, but I'm thinking about it. Um, actually getting a Pinterest board together just because I don't quite know which way to go, but that will all come to light and um, we're also looking at um, a really lovely furnishing project in Kensington and um, yeah, North London, something quite good in North London. So exciting, lots coming on. When we work with lighting designers, um, we have to have gone um, to quite, uh, quite a long way down the design process, which means having the client approval, of course, um, so that we're working on the same page. And once we have everything in place and have an idea of um, joinery, um, detailing, ceiling details and so on, then we will go to the lighting designer because they will always ask us for that information so we, 
we've no warm up to the project before, but we'd certainly know we need to have our drawings in place before we have a proper conversation. I think some of the developments that we work on could be challenging in that there's a large team. On the plus side, it's a very professional team and all the information is at hand that we need. On the downside, there are a lot of people to get approvals. So it works both ways. What I love about being an interior designer, even after more than 30 years, is that I, um, it's the, the different, the, the fresh approach to each new project is always interesting and I never get tired of that. Well, the process is always the same. Um, the individuality always makes for a new challenge each time. It keeps it fresh. I think, um, I like to think we stand out because our projects are timeless. A lot of them, when I look back over time I'm choosing images for websites or now social media, which we spend quite a lot of time doing, I look back at some of the projects and they still appear quite current. And that's um, interesting when they on Instagram or wherever they are, or LinkedIn, you know, and the, the, the attention that the post receives, I think is testament to that. To come to us. <laughs> no, no, we'll cut that, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Um, to hire an interior designer, um, I would say synergy is really important. You've got to get on with them, you've got to understand um, if it's a private client, then that's the most important thing is to feel, um, to develop a trusting working relationship. And if it's a more commercial um, type of project, then there'd be a more commercial angle to it as well as the aesthetics. So, and talk to, talk to more than one, definitely. We always love colour and I think there's a certain thread of confidence with colour through our projects. Um, that said, i probably inclined to balance the colour too. Um, tend to be more warm tone. When we start a new project we like to take a fresh approach to each project so we go out of our way not to repeat um, the same items of furniture in the same colour spectrum. And that's something that needs some careful consideration so that what we do and the brand stays um, correct and safe within within what we've built up but equally we need to ring the changes so that everybody um, gets some individuality and personal treatment. I think um, consistency would be to do with with textures and different confident use of textures but we also have a product a tableware product so if there's anything we we put in it's it's probably one of our table mat sets it's probably the consistent thing other than that and that's if it works if it doesn't work we wouldn't we wouldn't put it in. So we're sitting in um, a location in central London where we are in a, an apartment block. Um, it's 13 luxury apartments that were converted from office space. And the entrance is nestled in between um, a fast food place and a dentist. So, and we're now sitting in the penthouse which is, is clearly got quite a, a suitable price tag for this market in this day and age. So it was important to create a feeling of elegance from the minute the, the journey starts at the front door up into the penthouse. Um, and we were in a full client team with architects, construction engineers, quantity surveyors, um, asset manager was the client representative and a property a company is the, called Nuveen was the main client. So, and our task was all the interior architecture and interior design throughout the project. So our inspiration for the furnishing, um, we had to, we have two different schemes. Uh, the two bedroom flat is slightly lighter and brighter and we used vintage roads, rows because um, we thought that the, the, the market, the target market is supposed to be more of an English market in this area where solicitors and magistrates and members of parliament might live. So we went for a more English theme. And to bring the changes in the penthouse, we've gone for very warm autumnal colours, olive green, and then textures to balance that. Um, Touches of blue, which follows on throughout the other rooms in the apartment um, as you go through. So it hangs together, but each room has its own personality. Ideally, you need to go and train. Um, that said, if they 
choose the path slightly later, may not be, uh, maybe just after uni then, to certainly go and get their drawing skills. I personally still open to people who don't necessarily have a three or four year course because there's so much more to what we do than um, just computer skills. Um, that's, what, that's what I would say, is to get some form of qualification. In terms of um, drawing inspiration for being a designer, I definitely, for me, it's downtime, which invariably involves travel. I think because there's more time to think laterally, and then the sights that, that one sees wherever, whether it's um, you know, somewhere like Hong Kong or, or you know, a city, a vibrant city, or whether it's a third world country, everything we do and everything we design is a drawn from various experiences and it tends to be a combination of all those experiences. So I'd say travel. How do I relax? Well, in recent years I've taken up yoga, which I really enjoy. Uh, at the end of the day I probably do that once, but a lot of it is meeting friends. Um, I love cinema and theatre, so a combination of all of those things.